Arabic if I'm not saying it wrong. Likulli da'in, likulli da'in dawa. Mm. For every disease, there is a there cure. is a cure for it. Mm. You know, and when you look at the concept of AIDS, now I'm gonna get a little bit of what you might call it, uh, conspiracy theories. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You know, AIDS and all of these other major diseases were created for population control. Okay, where they want to reduce the population and they want to uh, have a amount of people they can control. Yeah, and for them to have, you know, uh, one world government or whatever bloody blah, blah but it's to really resource and resource uh, management management if you like resource management Yo. doesn't have to sound so bad it doesn't really <laughs> look at it it's evil and death so yeah. yeah it's really big to claim yeah. that you have a cure for it mm. that's why they took Dr. Sebi all the way to the highest of courts and mm. they said you really have to bring uh, evidence because you're practicing medicine without a license mm. And out of 200 and how many? 280 cases. Nobody has won against that court. Okay. But this man was able to win. And he was... I need to check into that. Not that yeah. I don't believe you, but it's, mm. it's no, just... Don't ever believe anyone unless you got the research. Yeah, yeah. You know, your own type of research. And first, I need to get an AIDS to get motivated enough to, like, no. get a key for that. <laughs> And you're actually going really little. You would... Mun nimi on Muttaki Khan ja sä katot Khan Visioni. Khan Visionissa mä haastattelen mielenkiintoisia ihmisiä ja yritän samalla oppia joka kerta jotain uutta. Paras tapa oppia on kuunnella ja kysyä. Sitä me tehdään täällä Khan Visionissa. Khan Vision. Agree to disagree. Welcome to another Khan Vision. We haven't been doing English Khan Visions for a while. Mm-hmm. I think you're the only one that has, has done it in Yeah. And yeah. You're the one of the first guests plus you're one of the most watched link uh, on YouTube mm. after the Husus racist thing yeah and it kind of blew up you know okay. have you have you seen the some I, of the I, comments I saw the comments they were pretty uh, brutal they were pretty uh, I don't, I don't know, know man it, like they're brutal in a sense but I I wasn't offended okay. I would be more offended if they would say like hey you don't know how to speak talk yeah. you don't know how to uh, take pictures you don't know how to uh, do podcasts and mm. whatnot because there is some truth in it i'm not a master of, of podcasting or, yeah. or the whatever the art is yeah. but like dissing one's skin color is something i can't do anything about it yeah that's, uh, that's an internal illness the person has you know <laughs> racism or whatever you call it or someone is looking at you that they're better than you mm. because of uh, status either money or the tall or whatever And like you said, if they said something about the quality of the camera, video, or the quality of the way you're doing the job, yeah, you would have taken it as offensive. But then question... I wouldn't take it offensive. I would yeah. be like, yeah, man, I need to up my game. There you that, go. that would be the, the, yeah, the, the initial yeah. thought in my head. Yeah, because haters <laughs> or hate will give you boost to do better yeah. if you look at it Yeah, in a way. Mm. You know, because then they're talking about something that you're passionate about. Mm. And your skill is being brought to the table. Yeah. You know, if it's really your skill, you're going to get better. Mm. If it's not yours, then you'll leave it alone. You yeah. Will, uh, you'll get exposed. But, you know, I like the I like the comments because I got about 900 views on that video. And, um, you know, uh, like Hassan Michael said in the previous videos yeah. that some of the haters the actually, episode, yeah. yeah, they kind of help you. To be, uh, you know, in your career, because mm-hmm. YouTube watches all the comments and you know likes thumbs downs yeah. as an activity. Yeah, you're yeah. creating something within. Absolutely. So every activity there, whether it's a comment, whether it's mm. a like, yeah, or a review, is a plus plus for you. Yeah, yeah, you definitely. Understand? So, <laughs> so I was thinking, should I just provoke people? <laughs> you should. <laughs> no, people I don't. should be provoked. I'm actually of the thought <laughs> idea. But in the provoke, not 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 you know in a in a in an aggressive way, mm. you know, but just provoking their thought, you provoke yeah. their mind, like Socrates, like yeah, yeah, like a man of such, yeah. you know. <laughs> And if you spark someone's uh, mind or you you, you kind of somehow get a reaction or mm. you, you get their thought out, yeah, then we have a dialogue. Yeah, you know, and if we have a dialogue, then we can have, you know, data, and then we can actually see, mm. like, oh shit, so we're different like that, mm. and I'm different like this. And so maybe we can work together in another way. Yeah. You know, Definitely. but we avoid conflicts and we avoid, you know, all them, uh, 
you know, uh, with you were just saying the word uh, provoking. Yeah, provoking and I was, I was thinking like, I really was thinking to get someone from Pero Suomala, I said, you know, in my podcast, someone great. who would be civil enough to have a discussion, mm. you know, because I think immigration in Finland is an issue that we need to talk about, you know, whether what what kind of a standpoint you have on immigration, that's a different issue, but mm. we should be able, we should be civil enough to talk about to it. To discuss it. Yeah, to discuss you know, it. To see the pros of it, yeah. see the cons of it. Have you, sorry, no, I did, on a side, side note, because yeah, yeah. we're talking about uh, Peru Suomala, I said, mm. have you seen the video that they made, like the Vali Kampanja video? To be honest, I heard a couple of people, uh, you know, speaking about it. Yeah. Uh, in, a, in, in a negative way. Yeah. And the energy that was coming out of it, I didn't like it. So to cut to the case, to the cut to the chase, no, <laughs> I haven't seen it. Okay, no, I I watched it yesterday. I just want to say one thing that, first of all, I think it was kind of um, childish. It was childish. And the second of all, I think what's ironic is that they're talking about the hate of the normal Finnish people have evoked this monster that is like beating up like Hulk kind of a monster that is beating up all these fake fake politicians and whatnot who are corrupt and whatnot Mm. and then i was like thinking like the superhero in that cartoon is 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 a guy who looks like a black you know like having a black kind of um, Uh, masking okay yeah first of all he's a naked person and then second of all he's like almost like black he looks like a black guy right i was like hmm they didn't really thought this one through. <laughs> yeah, they didn't think this through. <laughs> and I was like so I close. I, I was so close it. to write uh, to write in the comments mm. that well, the Peru Suomalainen hero mm. in this story, the moral of the story, the black guys are are the superheroes or something like that. Yeah, we'll but then I was like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't go to that level. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it let me not really annoy them like that because that would have touched the nerve. Yeah, you know, that would have because. Uh, Aren't they really about anti-immigration? You know, they're about mm. Finland for Finland. Yeah. And, and, and so for them to make an advert like that mm. is dumb and childish. Yeah, and, and plus yeah. saying that if you're homeless in Finland, country like Finland, if you end up being homeless, mm. it means that you have done many decisions, many wrong decisions in a row. Right. It's It's very hard. Like, I wouldn't say it's hard to become homeless, but mm. you need to, like, do a lot of wrong decisions in your life to end up being homeless like, you, know, you know when we say homeless, so why why are you like saying like immigration is the reasons i i became a homeless that's kind of it's not too true. far far-fetched it? it really is isn't it like let's have a restart so what's up you we haven't been seeing for a while yeah and i heard you were doing uh some kind of a fasting how yes. did it go i want to hear about your fasting absolutely uh b- b- you know before we go into my experience and experiment mm. we would have to you know uh talk a little bit touch a bit on fasting yeah itself uh, now you know fast is to simply stop consuming yeah uh food and if you don't stop consuming completely you just minimize how much food you take in right um so as muslims we have ramadan mm. which is around the corner yeah uh, and so that, that that fasting classifies as in- intermittent if I'm saying the word right, yeah. it's a period of time, and then you have a specific diet. So from mm. the sunset, uh, from the sunrise to the sunset, mm. we don't consume anything, and then we break our fast. Uh, back in, the, uh, you know, the Christians, the the Christians in the time of Jesus, mm. they would just have water fasting. Mm. You know, whereby they are not allowed to eat any food for that specific time. Mm. And it's just but still, they um, for Easter, I think people fast. Yeah, on Easter, which is water fasting as well, if I'm not wrong. Um, I think uh, I think it depends on what kind of Christian you are. But mm. some of the Christians they abstain from meat, yeah, yeah, and yeah. cheese and dairy products. I yeah, think. So there's a specific diet yeah. where you don't eat. So uh, me being me, you know, I ran off with the whole idea of fasting, mm. and I like you know to challenge myself. Yeah, as a person. And I like to go to the extremes to an extent. And that's where I came across uh, Dr. Sebi. Yeah. You know, rest, in, rest in power, rest in peace, whatever we want to say. I came across his story and how when he was 30 years old, he, you know, he was impotent, had diabetes. He had a whole lot of illnesses. 
and he was at the verge of suicide. Mm-hmm. So if you go into his story, he went to Mexico and then he found uh, an herbalist mm. of his sort. And all he told him was to stop eating completely fast, just water. Mm. And if I'm not wrong, he gave him some sort of uh, seeds, tamari or some kind of mm-hmm. leaves, berries. berries and stuff. Yeah. So he was given, again, if I'm not wrong, about 90 days of fast. Yeah. Jesus went 40 days just mm. with water. So when he told him 90 days... So he, he overdid the Jesus... He overdid the Jesus <laughs> limit. <laughs> okay, now people are going to get mad. It's just a mm, joke. But it's, Chill. Yeah, it's, Chill. Uh, it's a joke with, you know, with reality. It, yeah. it did happen like that. Yeah. So say be doing the 90 days, uh, in his words again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm pretty sure I'll do a couple of mistakes here and there. Mm. Uh, at, at 30 days when he was on just water mm. and the berries... He's saying with his word, he woke up with a crazy erection. He was really hot. The guy who was impotent, he was like, what? It's happening? He kept on fasting by the time of 60 days of fast. The diabetes is gone. So the impact that fast has on the person, mm. it's really, uh, and when you're on water, mm. you can drink water. Mm. Told a story, took my time, you know, got into the mindset of, look, you should do at least 48 hours mm. of just the water fast. Mm. get into it so I started training for it you know eating less eating less mm. in about two weeks three weeks and I could you could visibly see that I've lost weight mm. and I haven't yeah. been eating as much and what not I got into the uh, the water fast mm. started on a Saturday in the morning and then kept for 48 hours yeah and uh, mineral water and we already have even from the tap in Finland mineral water mm. So, usually, since as a Muslim, we fast from sunset to sunrise. Yeah. By the sunset, you know, my body and my stomach were really loud. And, yeah. You know, they're sending the signals like, hey, something is not right. What are you doing up there? <laughs> like, hey, we're supposed to be eating around this time. <laughs> is when you now start, you know, thinking like, hey, should I eat some? But again, is your, uh, your goal and your reason why, mm-hmm. you know, mind over of a matter so when the sunset left and i haven't eaten anything and when you're drinking water you shouldn't especially when you're doing water fast you shouldn't over drink yeah because then you can there's a specific condition that can come out yeah from it and it could become poisonous to you and you can actually yeah you know die of it so three to four liters you know normally when you're not fasting during the day right so when you're on a water fast through that 12 or 24 hours then you should minimum at least 10 liters and then you just you know uh break it down through mm. the day so when i get hungry i would drink about nine o'clock ten o'clock i'm thinking look uh and i wasn't working alhamdulillah mm. so i didn't have to go to work and put my energy mm. and my thoughts into work otherwise i'm sure i wouldn't have been able to make it because you need that uh glucose you need the atp that comes mm. from the food yeah think you know, from your mitochondria, you need it. If you don't mm. have it, you can't focus. I was off. Now, by 10 o'clock, uh, I'm thinking, let me sleep. Mm. You know, so... You know what happens when you sleep? And you're hungry. or just Yeah, generally. like, generally, yeah. when you're hungry or when you sleep, mm. uh, there is a hormone in our body that basically keeps us not... Um, ke- like, it, it, it kind of null numbs the hunger sensor like mm. obviously i'm an idiot so i'm just talking the idiot level you know i'm not going to the you know expert level so basically no, no, there's a hormone experts, that yeah. that that goes to our bloodstream uh. that keeps the body not hungry so that's why when we sleep right. we're basically fasting we're and, fast and we, state, yeah, yeah yeah we're in a fast state and we don't feel hunger mm. because our body is in a different state mm-hmm. due to the hormone and whatnot yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. anyway yeah. so yeah so uh but usually when you're kind of hungry the, 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 the sleep wouldn't mm. come as easy as you know as normally mm. so about an hour in or so uh you know get s- s- rough sleep where you tossing and turning and whatnot and uh i get to fall asleep Mm. Usually in my sleeps, I, I I dream. Yeah, and whether it's a vivid dream or whether it's you know uh, in, in 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 bits and bobs, mm. right? But this was a type of a sleep where it was really you can call it sleep, peaceful sleep, where I didn't really visualize a lot. I did not really see no no dreams whatsoever. Mm. And when I woke up, I usually normally woke up at six o'clock. Mm. Woke up normally. 
um, the hunger that was there was gone, but then there was that feeling of, you know, a light as a leaf. You're very light mm. physically. You're feeling like, uh, man, you could do a crazy marathon right now. Mm. But obviously, you're not going to go jump out to bed. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. You know, and then... You feel like very active. Very active. This is just now the first 24 hours and y- your mind is really clear and concepts that you didn't know how to maybe uh, plan it out. Mm. Or maybe an, a, a specific goal that you had and you wanted to do. You know, you suddenly have that energy, not just the energy, but you can actually see how you're going to go about mm. the whole thing that mm. you want to do. Now, um, I've been reading quite a lot about, you know, the, this three about the mind, the soul, and the self mm. as one human because we're, we're made out of those three. Mm. If one is missing, then if you're missing your soul, you're dead. If you're missing your mind, you're crazy. <laughs> and if you're missing your body, then you're somehow handicapped. Mm. So those three, how they interlink and how they, you know, supposed to work together. This mm. is before my fast. And there is a parts of that whole, you know, soup that I wasn't able to understand. You was able or you I wasn't, wasn't able okay. to understand. This is previous, uh, before pre the fast. Yeah. Right. So when we're, in about 30 to 34 hours to the fast Mm. and I decided that look I'm going to read or write Mm. it's the only thing that I'm going to spend my time with Mm. I'm going to really watch TV or Mm. use none of these electronics but if I have to research then I will yeah so then the whole concept of um, you as a human what you're all about Mm. you know if one was to know this if one was to figure himself out if one was to look within and to see what they have as a, as a person. Uh, I read it in a place where it said, if someone knew the value of their thought, then they would probably be the most uh, valuable individual on earth. And no, the which is That's deep. It's really deep. When I looked at him, I'm like, whoa, this person is really on to something. Yeah. You know? And then he goes on and, and he says, uh, we really cannot go into the khushul. In Salah, right? We really cannot go into complete where you stop your whole thought process mm. and you're in complete submiss- submission with the universe, with Allah. It's really like it's kind of a synchronism. It's a synchronism, mm. which yeah. for someone to reach that day would have to be enlightened or on a saint level, mm. so to speak. But if you can come to a point where you're the witness mm. of them thoughts and you're not going with any thought, but you're watching the thoughts interact with others, mm. with, with the other thoughts. Because there's millions of thoughts that go through your mind and then you just pick the best that suit you in that moment in what you should do mm. is how one can control the self. Mm. You know, we hear a lot about uh, self-discipline. Yeah. Hey, I'm yep. we're basically running out of time. Yep. So pause just that. pause your thoughts <laughs> and we'll continue in the we'll next one. That. Yeah. Devil. All right. So you, uh, you know, this is what I like about like talking to you that we were talking about fasting and now we're going to the mind and soul and spirit and And that was kind of the last podcast that we had yeah it had similar kind of um topics that we were talking about and we actually talked about fasting as well Mm. but i do understand what you're saying like it's almost the same when you have very hard exercise routine Mm. you you went out for a jog in an empty stomach you know you're pushing yourself as a human being and then you know you come and have this cold shower and and drink some water and and you start to look at some of the problems problems that you have or challenges you have and you you come you. yeah and you you get this uh, different kind of outlook like hey why was i stressed about this thing you know yeah. i just I have to focus on things that i can control and do them best and there you go. and the rest is not in my hand <laughs> different outlook yes yeah you get a different outlook so that's when you uh discover yourself or mm. the self discovery mm. it's what it, what, it, what it's uh it's all about mm. and you know that term you know when you look at it it sounds a bit crazy mm. how do you discover something that's within you yeah you know it's like a maze mm. that's mm. hidden in you mm. So, as I was going through the research, I came across, um, it was uh, a diagram. So, what they did is that they made a rectangle. Yeah. And then they put a circle in mm. the rectangle that fit perfectly in. And then they said the center is the self. Mm. Now, before we even go to the mind and, and the soul, we have to speak to the self. Because mm. the soul is the king and the mind is the tool that's going to help you control and get what you want to get. Yeah. But the self is the one that needs to be, you know, grabbed. 
Mm. So there's four elements into it. There's the self-knowledge. Mm. Then there's the self-concept. Then there's the self-esteem. Mm. And out of those three comes out what we know as the social self. The one is out with the people, the one is out and interacting with the environment. Then the character or, or the social self comes mm. out. So if the individual and these four all come down to what you call self-awareness. Mm -hmm. It is as simple as that. <clears throat> if you're in a metro and you're on your way to work, then you're of course aware of the environment. You're aware of what you're doing and where you're going. So that's the awareness that the person needs within the self. Mm. Uh, the self-concept now and the self-knowledge are the main ones. Mm. Because self-esteem is nothing if you don't have self-concept. And self-concept is, let's say, uh, when you're telling yourself that you're a fast runner, you know, that's the adjective. You're a fast runner, you're telling yourself. But you cannot do that unless you have the self-knowledge of you being a runner. So at some point in life, you discover like, hey, I can actually run and I'm good at this. So the self-knowledge has to come that you have to know yourself and what your, uh, before I even say purpose, because that's a big word, mm. what you really made about, what are you for? And most of us don't have that. We don't have that self-knowledge. That's why we get pulled peer pressure. Mm. That's why we get pulled with the rest of the society and we have a circle mm. or we have friends that do not resonate with what we really are mm. and where we're supposed to go. So you have to uh, get the self knowledge and Ninku, you can't get it unless you go through whatever you're going through mm. in life. What mm. life throws at you every moment and every scenario mm. is teaching something about you. Mm. So you just have to focus on you and through that journey because it's mm. a journey. It's never a destination. Mm. Once you think that it's a destination, uh, it's not a place you can ever get to. Yeah. It's a journey. I'm um, actually, it's, you know, it's funny because I just like, just before you were coming, mm. I was making some notes about this um, event that I'm going to talk about and, uh -huh. and the topic that I'm going to talk about. It's a lecture, but it's, it's weird because, you know, basically I'm not a professor or I don't know how to right. give a lect lectures or whatnot. But the topic, I got to choose the topic and mm. I said lifelong learning, you know, and yeah. that's like how important that is. And you were talking about, you know, thoughts and you said previously, like how important the thoughts are. Mm. Thoughts are very important. And, you know, like it doesn't kind of tie into this whole thing, but mm. it does in a weird way. And, you know, people always they look for mir miracles like within the water like the Moses or Musa that yeah. we call in Islam that he split the ocean, split the ocean with or the will like of Jesus God. Turned water into wine. Yeah. yeah. So the the thing is, you know, to some people they're looking for miracles like that. Mm. To me, miracle is like talking, you know, human beings communicating. Everything you see around us is because of the speech. Mm -hmm. Because of the communication. One human being told another human being, mm. why don't you add this with that? And then you have boom, you have a glass. Mm. Right? Absolutely. So ideas. Imagine if we couldn't talk, we couldn't exchange these ideas. We couldn't express them. We couldn't express them. And how hard it would be. You know, some of the time some of the times we have problems because we don't communicate with the person that we're mm. misunderstanding someone. Even with the speech, we don't understand each other. Because the speech itself is a miracle. Yeah. So yeah. that's why, you know, like one of the fascinating things about the Quran, like obviously I'm biased towards Quran mm. because I'm a Muslim. When God says, but well, Qalam, mm. you know, by the by speech. The, mm -hmm. And then you, you know, as a dumbass, me, you know, back in the days, so I was like, oh, why is God talking about speech? Yeah, yeah. But the speech is power. It's Very magic. Powerful. It is. You know. In the Prophet himself uh, said, Sallallahu Alaihi that sometimes mm. speech becomes magic, becomes voodoo. If you look at the Bible, mm. it's in the first verse, the first day was the word. Yeah, like we have the no, same, the we have the qalam, you know. God, like, yeah. Yeah. What it actually means, I don't know. Yeah. Is it a figure of speech or or is it um, actual, like, look, I'm it's not... Literal. It's literal. Actually, it's actually literal and I can say literal. I'm, I'm not a scholar, so I'm not going to take, like, opinion on that. Yeah. But the word, like, let's just focus on speech mm. and thoughts. How magnificent these things are. And then people look for purpose in different things. Mm. But we should look at ourselves and think about wow i can actually think and i can put these things into words mm -hmm. and i and can communicate the these things into reality yeah yeah and that's why they they're a miracle because these words mm. 
uh, it was Nipsey Hussle in one of his rhymes, mm. which really caught me off. Yeah. What he yeah. was saying was, I spoke some things to the universe and they appeared. You know, so these words, mm. the speech that we have, it starts as a thought. Mm. So that's the whole process. Uh, intention. It starts mm. with a thought, the thought becomes a speech. And the more that you believe mm. in the speech, then it becomes a reality you know you had yeah. a thought of uh doing podcasts and the thought became you spoke about it when you then spoke it we did the first episode and then episodes keep on coming it becomes a yeah, literally we did the first episode yeah. which is funny it is really funny and it just came to me you know it's like it really and now we're on episode 15 yeah so this is going to be 16 yeah episode 16 yeah they keep on piling up yeah and you know how so, many subscribers i have now how many are they going about 94 man 94 and, and that's in a matter of a month a couple of months or so uh, yeah three four months so I've, I've been trying to do one a week okay but sometimes i do less uh, and the funny thing is uh if i'm not wrong is the amount of viewers that i haven't subscribed really because there are people who are viewing how dare you <laughs> <laughs> they don't subscribe like hey man you have to click it you have to like the like mm. and subscribe <laughs> mm. so uh the self there's another word for self, which is persona yeah. and character. Mm. Each and every one of us have a character and have a persona, mm. you know, and, and, and they're within you. These thoughts, we can't block them. We cannot stop them. Yeah. The thoughts and, and the persona that we were created with, they, I'm telling you, brother, they are, uh, they move on the same wavelength. Mm. But because of the environment that we have, mm then somehow we kind of block what we were supposed to, mm. what we were supposed to be. As young kids, mm. Allah asked Delta Asti from preschool, mm. you know, we were given the thought, uh, become. Mm. What do you want to become when you grow up? Mm. When reality is, is, is to be, if you were just to be, mm. you will definitely be what you were supposed to be because all the things and all the opportunities that we were supposed to use mm. has already been put there for you. You know, uh, as Muslims, and again, we're biased, mm. you know, we have been given predestination, like every single thing. Yeah, I happens, think there is a huge, happen. there is a big debate about predestination. Okay. Like I personally believe in predestination, but it's not so simple. I think it's a mix of things of different thoughts. Yeah, and it's different kind of concepts. hard to uh, explain. But you know, I just want to like close the last thing that we were talking about, which yeah. was fasting. So, what did you discover with? You're fasting, and how long did you do the fasting? For forty-eight hours. You did straight forty-eight straight hours. Straight forty-eight hours. Okay, that would be two days. Were you hungry? The hunger stopped. Oh, how was the hunger? Like, what kind of hunger you had? And did the, you have cravings? Yes, you do. You know, <clears throat> especially for sugar and coffee. I had a lot of cravings mm. for that. You know, the hunger starts with your stomach, you know, churning and a bit of pain in here and there, and then it becomes dizziness. And then from the dizziness, it becomes where you're really annoyed and you really don't want to interact with anyone and you just want to be on your own. And one of the things we wanted to today touch on was how the art of being on your own. Yeah. And being alone and having yeah. a space. So your whole body, your whole self is forcing you to find a space where you can chill mm. and start and understand what you're actually doing. So Alhamdulillah, got a little space where, um, you know, I'm not hearing a lot of noise or... I'm not really interacting with a lot of people. So I can't even really, uh, you know, summarize mm. within those, the last, you know, 30, 32 hours of the fast, what I've been writing mm. in terms of poetry, in terms of lyrics, in terms of, I even came up uh, because ideas come to you and you're like, whoa, was this in me? Like, this is actually a viable idea if I put energy into it, that I can actually do it mm. and it can become very successful. Yeah, You know, I uh, started writing a small script to a little, uh, not really a movie, but, but you know, uh, documentary? a documentary of sort, about 10, 12 mm. minutes of sort. So ideas come to you. That's when I came across the Apple uh, maker. What was it? Steve Jobs. Yeah. That he would go on Waterfest mm. for days on, you know, say he was, he was a kind of crazy guy, man. Yeah, he would go like, anyway. extremes to it. <laughs> yeah. And he would yeah. really fast. And the ideas... Uh, the thoughts are clear as water because that's all you're taking. Mm. They're not just a, a waffle of a thought that comes and, sp and goes, but actually stays, it manifests, and then it gives you suggestions of how to go ways about it. Mm. That is just one of the craziest, most uh, skills, I can say, mm. or, or benefits that you can get from the water fast mm. because you're not eating anything. Mm. And from this, you can actually learn that we need so little did you take anything from 
this fast experience? Like, did you get any concrete idea that you were running after or? Yes. What were some of these ideas or do you want to share them? Yes, Are they I too in- want to share intimate? Too. Yeah. No, okay. Uh, so something really intimate that I wouldn't share. Yeah. Per se, yeah. Knowing me. <laughs> I lack filter sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that that makes interesting <laughs> yeah. to to hear yeah, about so you and your doing. I've 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 always had this uh musical type of lyricist artist mm. within me ever since I've been a kid. Yeah. Do you know so that is a what's your rapper name young <laughs> no it's it's my alias which is ross ross Roots, yeah I you know and, and there is a story behind it too mm. but uh to how to actually you know work about that mm. and you know how to actually get this music of mine mm. and i'm not really a type of an artist who's you know trying to put this out for money yeah you know you enjoy doing I it. enjoy doing it. it's the passion yeah, yeah. So, uh, like I was saying, the self is a persona, right? There's a mm. persona within you that you're possessing, that you have, is an ability you have. Yeah. So it would help you to bring it out. Yeah. So that's an ability that I saw that I can get. Uh, that's the first one. And the second one was to be more vocal. Yeah. You know, to do more. What do you mean by that? More vocal as in to do, because I, uh, I feel very comfortable in front of a camera. And mm. I feel very comfortable in front of an audience. It could be 10, it could be 100. Mm. In in Helsinki now they organize quite a lot of free uh, not free but open mics mm. so where I could actually present my challenge work yourself and challenge myself yeah. and actually go in front of an audience and maybe get in get into competitions. So I like think that. the thing is that you're looking for is the flow state. Yes, because uh, one of the uh, like well flow state in a nutshell mm. you're in a state you're doing something that you enjoy yeah. and it's uh challenging enough to keep you interested yeah. but not too challenging so you kind of throw the shit away and, yeah and you're like i can't do it yeah i can't yeah. do it and it's not too easy because if, if it's too easy you don't really pay attention to that absolutely yeah so, it doesn't bother you when you're not doing yeah. it so yeah those two and of course to continue this water fast if and if i could do how often are you going to do it now I don't want to go overboard with it. I'm already a skinny guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm already a <laughs> There's nothing dude. left after There's this. nothing left of me. So I don't really want to go over the board with it. So if I could do it in a month, mm. minimum, if I could do two to three days in a month mm. where I'm just on water and air, yeah. then it would be great. I think it's good for detoxification as yeah. well. So you get some toxins out of your body. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Because I do consume a lot of sugar. You know, so when that's once I did uh, go on that fast for the water, it mm. could, it's visible. Like people, even uh, my mother and some of my brothers were asking me, like, "Look, your skin looks a lot more uh, loose, a bit better." So what do you mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm like, no, nah, not really tighter. I think yeah, it's a bit tighter. Yeah, yeah. and you know, uh, this girl that I was talking to, mm. I told her that day, "Yeah, I'm 31 and I've got two kids." And she was like, "Get out of here! You look like a kid yourself." I'm like, "Who are you calling a kid? Mm. And what are you talking about?" So the fasting keeps you. Even younger. And then the term, black don't crack. You know, I'm like, what does that even mean? How is that possible? So I targeted the Hollywood, uh, you know, actors and, 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 and celebrities and whatnot. And I found out that most of them fast. And most of them do water fasting. And, you know, so it's just how this fasting, whether you're white or black, mm. it's really, uh, it's uh, it's an ancient mm. way of treating. What, what did you have? You know, what was the first meal? Or what did you have dates. after? Dates. I started with dates. Okay. And, you know, drank a little smoothie. You what know, kind of smoothie? The smoothie was a bit, you know, don't laugh. Banana, of course. Yeah. Put a banana in there. Uh, had a bit of kiwi, mm. um, frozen uh, berries and whatnot. Mm. And then some porridge. Mm. So as the hours were going, I started eating a bit of salad and a bit of meat. But and you then, didn't have too much at no, one go. So because my stomach what, wouldn't even take it. Yeah, yeah. You would you probably know? just throw up. Yeah, it, it reached to a point where the scent of food wouldn't really bother me. Mm. You know, when I was at about 40 to 42 hours, mm. you know. And I did not uh, really exclude, exclude myself to an extent where I wasn't really going outside. Mm. You know, my mother was there and my brothers were there. Mm. So and I did have space in my room, but she would cook. Mm. So if you're fasting and you try and uh, completely separate yourself from food, then you're kind of missing uh, the whole concept, which is self-discipline. Yeah, that's why you're fasting in the first place. That you don't tempt yourself and 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 and, and curry. Mm. Discipline is good. And do you finish. feel like you're more disciplined after this? I fast? do. 
How how can you uh, can you describe how? I can describe in the sense with the um, well, the best way to describe would be with the cigarettes. Okay. You know, there was a craving for that, mm. but now it's a point where I'm like uh, I can postpone it. Yeah. So long as I give it a reason. Mm. Or you're busy, you're doing this now, smoke later. Mm. Or you're sleeping right now, smoke later. Or you're reading a book. So that has become, it hasn't become an urge where, but like, hey, mm. I've got to, I've got to. Mm. Another part is the sleep. Yeah. You know, once I'm up, uh, it reaches to a point where I don't need the alarm no more. Okay. Your body registered itself to that particular time mm. that you were getting up something I cannot explain. I don't know why. Yeah. But that's the time that you really get up and you sleep quicker. Okay. You know, so, but the more you do it, I, I wouldn't, of course, say that my self-discipline right about now is 100%. It yeah. should be, and yeah. it will be, Yeah. so long as I just do the fasting. Yeah. You know, if you can discipline yourself not eating anything at all, and you can cut down the uh, the most essential thing, mm. which is food, then you can come The first quite need that yeah. we have after oxygen after is oxygen. water, and after and that is food. food. Yeah. yeah. Water and oxygen, we cannot get rid of them because we'll definitely die, right? But the food, if we can limit that, mm. then uh, because we need the mind, the mind is the is the component that all of us, you know, the funny thing is every single person has the potential or the ability to be a genius or to excel mm. at something to a point where everybody would call them, wow, that person is a genius. Mm. But they're not really a genius if you look at it. They just figured out what they're good at. Mm that nobody can really do the way they do. Mm. And they're just doing that, mm. you know. So, um, and I came across a little a, a, a clip of, it was Jay-Z mm. who was saying pretty much the same thing I was saying, but in different words. Mm. And I've been saying this for quite some time, which is all of us are, you know, just like your DNA is unique to your father and to your ancestry, mm. that we have this talent mm. that is unique to everyone. But again, it's the self-discovery and you tap into that. And once you tap into that, you work on it mm. and you become a master of that art mm. then that's it you know you will uh, go where you are dreaming to go to or you're meant to go or you're meant to go to all right let's you know. continue after after this break so i like what jay-z mm. sheikh jay-z sheikh jay jim jay um, muallim <laughs> jay-z has taught us yeah. anyway um i like what you said that we need to find what we are meant to do mm. right whether we were meant to do it or not it doesn't still change the fact that if we don't do what we are supposed to do we'll never find it right mm. i don't know if it makes sense but anyway so um just an you know interesting idea that came into my mind is i was talking to you know to some people uh, this lady and she is a mom mm. of two and she was she wants to get into school, right? And which is very good idea. Mm. And I really totally support her to, to study and further her education and yep. whatnot. And then she was saying that I just want to start. So first of all, she said, I don't want to apply for a university mm. because univers to get into a university is quite hard. It's a it mission. Yeah, it, it, it requires more discipline. In a nutshell, that's mm. what she said. And then she said, I'm going to apply for Amati Gorka Kolo, which is that, uh, what, what, what is that in English? I think that would be an applied university. Yeah, applied science of, university. applied science university yeah, or something yeah. like that. And then I was like, whoa, why? Mm. Why though? And she said, it's easier. I want to get to a job. And I was like, why? Because I don't want my kids to look up to me and say oh mom you didn't study hard yeah. enough or something like that then as and then i was like starting to think me as a kid mm. and and watching my mom my mo mom was always at home you know as goti it they say like what what's that in english uh, the house mom house mom or housewife, housewife yeah. yeah and i never had that kind of an idea in my head like oh mom 
why don't you work? Mm. <laughs> Please leave the house. Yeah. And I was like, is that, then I was like thinking, obviously I didn't say to her that is that more of a perception that you, that person has about herself? Right. And look, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to advocate that people shouldn't study. You should always learn. Pursue I think, a, yeah, a, yeah, a career or whatever. You should always have lifelong learning mm, attitude mm. in you, like True. to learn about things. But you don't necessarily need to go to university to learn. Mm. Mm. You know, that's my point. True. And and the second point is like you, uh, she was saying that I want to go to the uni and mm. get a job so that I will be respected. And I th- I feel like she's yeah, talking right. about by society. She, was she a single mom as well? Yes. No, she's not single she's mom. Lady yeah, lady and lady. and she's she married to a husband, a, okay. a good man right. who's who's in right. yeah who's like an engineer and is yeah. working in a big firm. Nice. So right, what right, I, right. So I, I just, just, and, and, and the husband is not like pressuring her to do to anything. Do it. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's totally her own ideas mm, mm. and to do something. So I was like thinking like, Hmm, interesting. You want to do all this hard work right. so you would be looked upon as someone who's successful to an extent. Yeah. 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 And I was like, mm. Uh, then I said to her, like, maybe you should really ask yourself what you really want to do. And I said, like, if if you really want to become an engineer, IT engineer or mm. an architect or a police officer, you should ask, why do you find this job or this occupation path, yeah. or path appealing to you? Yes. Why why do you find it talking to you? You know, mm. what, what does it really mean to you? you know, uh, Instead of, you know, getting somewhere so that. I don't get recognized as. Mm. And the point that I want to talk about today is how come the society, especially Mm. the Western society, and I'm not talking about West as a bad thing, you know, like some people talk, you know, I think there are many amazing things that, you know, that the West does. And (laughs) and no no wonder that the West is... As advanced as they are. Yeah, exactly. But there are some, some of the things that I really don't understand, which is... We as a society, and I'm talking about myself as well, we look down upon mothers and motherhood overall. Mm. We underrate mothers. We think like, oh, it's not a job because you don't get paid for it. Absolutely. You know, and I'm not like, look, I don't want to become a a sovereignist or something like, oh, oh, you should be home or whatnot. You know, it's up to you what you want to do. But I'm saying like there are people who really try to take care of their kids Mm. and give the best to their kids Absolutely. you know whether it's nourishment or love or care yeah. and we like shouldn't really them with discipline or yeah you know. and i i've seen so many like women and obviously i haven't talked to all the women mm-hmm. but i know so many women that they feel very inferior with this right. and and it's really you know, we sad. have to we have to break down this whole beast to yeah. the components if you like yeah uh, it's it's a mess yeah, it's a mess <laughs> that means that it's all entangled that's why up. we have you to sort it out my anyway brother, let's go <laughs> you know if we kind of touch the wrong place it might blow the hell up right mm. so mm. uh for her example if we mm. take straight her example um you know she's married she's been married she's got kids and uh she has a husband who's in a good occupation and he can mm. really uh more than afford mm. the family's economic state or the money and whatnot right so uh for a woman like that who, you know, from the get-go of her marriage, she didn't really even speak this to her husband about it. It's okay to have inspiration, yeah? At mm. some point of your life, that is something you want to do. It's okay, you know, but it's rather funny. Let's say all of a sudden, I'm 31 right now, and I've never done uh, painting. Right? Mm. So all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, man, guess what? From now on, set, I'm a painter. I'll do it regardless of what's happening. I'll start. You started late. Of course, it's possible. Mm. But you started late. And mm. you must remember that you will face a whole lot more uh, challenges mm. than if you had started when you were young. Yeah. So to bring it back to her, and the reason why she's doing mutaqi, look again. Mm. Like, most of us know the how to mm. do something. Everybody knows how these days. Mm. How to get money or how to go to from point A to B, how to study, how to get this. We know. But bring about five people or ten people who can tell you why exactly what they're doing, mm. and it makes sense. Mm. And 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 it's because they want it. Mm. It's not because society has given them a label of some sort, so they're just conforming with what everybody's doing, or because somebody's just uh, or peer pressure. 
most people don't do that. Mm. So the lady in question is doing this for, and me being as brutally as honest as I can be, and if somebody gets annoyed about it, then I'm actually speaking to that mm. particular person mm. who's getting mm. provoked. It's bogus. But obviously it's an, your opinion. And, and yeah. what you're trying to say here, I think one of the things that we should be very clear about, you're not saying that women shouldn't, shouldn't get edu- that, no. educate they themselves, should, yeah, yeah, but they should. they should know what they want to do. And why. And, Wh- and why they want to do. Exactly. Now, yeah. I'll give you the, uh, the other example, mm. where is if she's a single mom, mm. her husband is not there, then of course she has to find a way, you know, not only to bring the money in, Mm. But to be the mom and the dad to the kid at the same time. She has to get some kind of a career. She has to go and hustle Mm. her bread, right? Mm. But then again, to look down, this whole thing goes down to the core where they're looking down upon motherhood. And that's what you said. As filthy as that sounds, as cold as that sounds, is the harsh reality Mm. where a woman who's in the house and who's the manager of the house and Mm. who's really looking after everything that goes on on the house is really powerful woman. Mm. because she's a core and she's fabric of the society to be honest because Mm. she's raising the future she's raising herself she's really being the backbone of this man to that essence Mm. understand because she's there for him Mm. she's raising his seeds and she's also now I don't want to say raising him because she's not Mm. his mom Mm. but she's being a teammate Mm. You know, and he didn't force her to do this either. Mm. You know, she's being a team player. Mm. You know, she can make him happy. There was a companion lady who said, my husband, when he leaves the house, you know, he leaves like a hungry tiger. And when he's coming back, he's like a tired le- a leopard mm. you know, who needs a little stroking and who needs to, you know, somebody to talk to him and help him out and mm. speak to him. Mm. Now, that's what a woman does. I'll give you a small example because mm. a lot of women think. That we could be misogynists. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, just about to like, say that. Like, oh, these guys, the alpha males, <laughs> bullshit, bloody blah. Uh, like tomorrow, you'll see. Like my following is like two or three, you yeah. know, because of this video. Really? You know, um, it was a ceremony, and Imam, right? He, he he got up and he was like, "All of you men in the congregation, the man who thinks he's the man of the men in his house, man, stand up. I've got a gift for you." Only one stood up. The rest were like, not really. You know, I know me. <laughs> I'm not really going to go to my house and then start telling my wife I'm the man. One of them stood up. Mm. And then the imam was like, yes, man. I think you probably heard of this. Come to me. Uh, he said, uh, because you are the man of the man, I'll give you this thaw, this khamis. Mm. Yeah, but you have to pick a color though. Mm. It's golden brown. It's bluish. And it's green. He's like, man, just give me the golden brown. Mm. Took the golden brown, ran off, went home, and told his wife, look, I told you I'm the man's man, right? He's like, so what happened? Tell me what's going on. Mm. He said, the imam said this, that who's the man's man, get up and I'll give you a gift. Mm. He said, what's the gift? It's this soap of mm. this color. Mm. She did not do anything. So else. soap is basically a garment or, or like, ca- uh, not cape, rope. A uh, rope. Yeah. yeah. It's a rope. It's the, uh, the word that these Arabs, right? So-called Arabs. Uh, but anyway, so she said, well, did you have options? Mm. Was there any other thing that you could have taken from the gift basket? And mm. then he says, actually, yeah, there was different colors. She was like, really? Uh, okay. She started giving him some compliments, gave him a little kiss there. She gave him some tea. And then she said, you know, the color green looks really nice with your eyes. She, you know, you should really go get that. He said, really, honey? Yeah, you think so? Yeah. He went back to the imam. And he was like, imam, uh, I want the green though. Mm. She was like, why? Because my wife thinks <laughs> I look better with that. He said, man, give me the throw, go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I heard a similar one, but with yeah. a different, so different thing. Women, they've been given mm. this power where they can actually, uh, I want to say control, mm. but they can guide the energy. Well, I want to take the, the conversation into another thing. Yeah. I'm not talking about women's particularly. Mm. This is just an example. But I think, you know, as a man as well, yeah. like... Uh, you know a lot of men are doing things that you know they don't know why mm. and they're they're pursuing things that doesn't really make them happy and i'm not talking about happiness like if you when you eat a candy you become a happy like True. Yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm talking about being content Peace. yeah, yeah being content. like finding synchronism with your mind and body you Absolutely. know you're one you're like 100 out of 100 with yourself yes. yeah that's one of the things that we should aim towards mm. now i started to think and well, like obviously I don't have a kids not that I know of <laughs> anyway you never know, no, no. just joking so I, I I don't know and like I don't I don't have any kids <clears throat> but then I was like thinking like could I become a house dad yes flip the script yeah sugar daddy sugar daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so right there. so I I I started <clears throat> to think like I would 
like obviously now some people can say that mm. oh you're just saying you don't really want to be with the kids you, you know really it's annoying it. and whatnot i seriously man i enjoy being with the kids there's so many things that you can learn from the kids Absolutely. you know i would i can imagine myself now as we were talking that yeah. Cooking some really good food for my kids, taking care of them, you know, getting exercising know with them. them. Yeah, yes. getting to know them, play some games with them, you know, go out with them, do things with them. Mm. And while they're going for school, you know, I could, you know, go for work or whatnot, come back. And obviously, you know, maybe I'm romanticizing because I don't have kids yeah. and, and so whatnot. Them, inshallah. Who knows? Yeah, no. <laughs> anyway, I'm not married yet. How can I get kids, man? unless it's like a jesus thing you know somebody just a brings me <laughs> somebody just brings me like hey here's a kid for you anyway but my point being like i don't know i would i would like to be a house dad man if it comes to it yeah I like, well, no what not even if it comes to it mm, i think at some point you would want yeah to i enjoy cooking mm. i enjoy organizing things and yeah. and cleaning things mm. and i enjoy being at home when it's like organizing everything you know mutaki uh Now, hopefully, this is evidence too. Uh, you know, Mutaki, the, you are born in the wrong body. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. That what you just said, the speech that you just said, the words that you just spoke, right? I mm. hope it gives uh, the, the 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 female audience that there is no any level of being a misogy. Is it misogynist that word? You mm. know, being uh, dominant males who really like try and make women look bad because that's the picture yeah, yeah, yeah. that people give. You flip the script. Now, the same thing. If Now should I the, the last part that I forgot to yeah. and I like when my woman beats the hell out of me. Oh, yeah, that's what you know. <laughs> that's just joking <laughs> in a sense that well, you never know. But listen, no, no, no. Listen, is, is I'm not into that. <laughs> most men will tell you, look, man, there's no way I'm gonna be a uh, a house dad. You know, I'm a father, alhamdulillah. You mm. know, and a person who's very close to me mm. did. Give me this idea. Who's a female, by the mm. way? I don't know if I had to specify that. Mm. Um, a human being. <laughs> a human being. So she did propose that and said, "Look, man. So if you were to be a house dad, then how would things go? This is pre-marriage before mm. we uh, wanted to get into it. So immediately, because the way I've been raised, mm. society, you know, culture, whatever, got into me. It's like, wait, hold up. No, I don't really think that I would be a house dad where I'm just at the house and doing." What house ma- housewives do, which is looking after your house and cooking and looking after your kids and, you know, being there. And even if you're working, work mm. from the house, you know. My immediate response was no. And her immediate question was like, why the hell not? They're your kids. See, you want me to be a housewife, but you don't want to be a housewife. Then a whole lot of argument came out of it. So we should be able to. There's nothing wrong mm. with being a house dad and being with your kids mm. and, you know, actually getting to know them mm. and getting to know their character and your partner going out and working and doing what she's supposed to do and paying the bills and helping each other with what you can. Man, if the two of you are in a harmony and an mm. understanding of that, it's a beautiful thing to have. Just mm. like it is a beautiful thing to have a housewife. Mm. But uh, society has tainted that, you know, yeah. feminists... You know, feminism. Oh, you said the word. I man. said the word. Now people are gonna come hating. <laughs> they they should come hate. We can discuss things. You know, it's a dialogue. <laughs> we can talk. The feminism is what really breeds, or you know, gives I think feminism ideas. is very misunderstood as a concept mm. because there are different kinds of feminism. You True. know, like the yeah. basic feminism, right. I think it's very good because you should, like to empower women to, Absolutely. you know, to... But you know, a woman mm. is already empowered. But when it comes, when it goes is. to like man-hating, yeah, that's yeah, different. That's like the, the men, like, that, oh. that, that, that's like, you know, alt-right version of feminism. Of that's, feminism, that's, that's like very... Um, well, let me la- let me not, <laughs> I was about to say attack. No, let me not really uh, paint the whole umbrella of feminism, mm. but there is that group. Yeah, because you know, when it comes to the uh, sorry, I just want to say when it comes to the basic fundamentals of feminism, yes, like very basic stuff. Uh-huh. I think me and you, we do belong to that category that okay. women shouldn't be abused, true, and women should be supported to you know 
to go and to, achieve to achieve, achieve and to fulfill herself to as a person yes. right yep, yep. and and nobody should force anyone to do anything and they shouldn't be submissive you know they should be respected as, as equals they should be equal. they should be paid equally for the equal amount of f- with their intellect in not that sense, through I'm their a feminist too yeah, you know what exactly. I mean I do, yeah I do yeah. support in that sense from yeah. that category yeah but when we come to the point and this goes both to the males and the females when we come to the point where we're bashing the other significant and mm. we're like no and we're trying to uh you know look down upon them and stuff then that's 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 what's really killing the thought mm. of motherhood or fatherhood yeah you know and society if you look at it big man it's it's has been designed to destroy the families because that's how you destroy societies you know i don't i don't idea. think we create societies to destroy families mm. it's rather that we you know it's like any addiction or any kind of things that human being is indulge with mm. too much anything is too much absolutely so when it comes to you know accumulating wealth or what not and like setting up standards you know mm. like this is the standard you should be living yeah. in and, and, the, and the, yeah yeah and the problem is that there isn't any standards that you should be living in you know there mm. isn't like a manual that this is how you should be living should unless be you rigid, un- yeah. uh, unless you like believe in religion and what not but mm. then again even the religion is and you know if you look at the major religions they kind of give you like hey treat people nicely but yeah, they don't say yeah. like hey have a mercedes True. or you know like have they a don't give you guidelines yeah person. yeah yeah we, like we look this is how you should make money and and what not and i think uh, just before this clip ends mm. i want to say that i think one of the problems with with our society is that <clears throat> oh, i kind of forgot what's the problem mm. with our society we got quite a few yeah but <laughs> you know we got quite a few anyway we got a lot of problems you know but anyway i just had a brain fart they yeah, call it in finland comes the ghost <laughs> you know the good thing with problems because you mentioned it right now is uh, there's a solution to every problem you know it's there you know so problems should be looked at i don't even really look problems unless problems. you have hiv i don't know they haven't figured out any pro- solutions for well, you well dr sebi did <laughs> dr sebi did then they like, actually i i'm quite skeptical about uh, that to be really, honest well it is good to be skeptical yeah. but the man himself brought you like know, if someone the date of we ran out of the clip uh, out of image or, i like that or, yeah but you, you know, know let's keep continuing for for a bit the, the, i don't think he had a solution for aids because if uh, he did so yes then wouldn't you think like people would come after that yes people would and people did okay he had a hole in honduras he has a, a hole uh, a compound yeah where he can actually treat whoever wants and really seek treatment okay That's so what kind they, of treatment is that the same thing that he had which is fasting and making a carbon based diet carbon based yeah. diet so you're eating like carbon boards <laughs> <laughs> literally it would be carbon boards but and mario yeah in fruit uh, and 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 no milk like, mm. no meat you know none of that uh it was this was his name uh, the, 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 whatever he's never forgot he said he doesn't eat anything that shits or farts meaning he doesn't eat no chicken i think it's extreme it's really yeah. fucking extreme to go to that yeah, level yeah, yeah, yeah. but to minimize okay, okay we are back again and we have the light so i'm i'm a little bit skeptical because there is a lot of people and doctors and stuff like that you understand where my skepticism Absolutely. comes from yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's a very critical disease it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a killer yeah you it's know. almost like having a death note it is and you know it's killing your immune system and that's your first defense yeah. from the smallest of the viruses mm. you know so an hiv positive who really has the disease doesn't have an immune system Mm. and 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 uh you know as 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 a as a researcher or a biologist or a mm. scientist in the make mm. i am of the thought and i am of the opinion based on you know uh, data and factual mm. factual ideas but again it's still an empirical opinion, empirical evidence uh, evidence yes and anything or a disease that is created mm. then there's also um a cure for it Yeah. In Arabic if I'm not saying it wrong, likulli da in likulli da in dawa. For every disease and there is a there cure. is a cure for it. Mm. You know, and when you look at the concept of AIDS, now I'm going to get a little bit of what you might call it, uh conspiracy theories don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. You know, AIDS and all of these other major diseases were created for population control. Okay. Where they want to reduce the population and they want to uh have a amount of people they can control. Yeah, and for them to have 
you know, uh, one world government or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it's to really uh, resource and resource uh, management, management, if you like. Resource management. Yeah. It doesn't have to sound so bad. <laughs> it doesn't really. When you look at it, it's evil and death. So yeah. Yeah, it's really big to claim yeah. that you have a cure for it. Mm. That's why they took Dr. Sebi all the way to the highest of courts. And mm. they said, you really have to bring uh, evidence because you're practicing medicine without a license. Mm. And out of 200 and how many? 280 cases, nobody has won against that court. Okay. But this man was able to win. And he was... I need to check into that. Not that I don't believe you, but it's, mm. it's no, just... Don't ever believe anyone... Unless you got the research. Yeah, yeah. You know, your own type of research. And first, I need to get an AIDS to get motivated enough to, like, no, get a cure for that. And <laughs> you actually go really little. You would definitely Because, you know, like, it, yeah, I would, like, oh, definitely God. go into that. But, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, man, to get the man's got no AIDS motivation for so, so far. Oh, my God, not <laughs> near it to us. But, yeah. Anyway, we were... So, it, to conclude this craziness that we were talking about mm. is, like, look... We are not trying to say what you should be doing or you shouldn't be doing. Mm-hmm. What we are saying is that whatever you do and when you decide to do something, what feels right to do. To mm-hmm. me, if I have kids, most probably I would feel like I should spend time with them. Yeah. And to do that without like even if people are shaming, you know, you should be doing you if it feels right. If it exactly. feels if it really feels right so deep, deep down. Why, yeah, your why should be big. It yeah, and, really and big whatever big. you do, just know that as long as you are convinced, like really convinced, you know, you don't need to impress anyone. Yeah. You know, just look at the mirror and say, Hey, this is what I wanna do and cool. Mm-hmm. Just do it. But I don't know, like don't live for other people. Yeah. Don't impress people. Impress that, yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah like really there hard. is this saying that we buy things to impress people that we don't even like. Yeah. So you know that's <laughs> what it, what it is like. You're putting all this effort to something that to to get recognition, and nobody that gives you any recognition. You. Doesn't benefit you. You know the how of that. You know it's really hard to do it because mm. we live in that type of an environment where mm. everybody's really doing it. You know, mm. and mm. to be an outsider is hard for us. We yeah. really hate to be alone again or yeah. to do something that really makes us happy there, there is this so. one guy who says it kind of boils down to the same un- idea and i like kind of i love this philosophy and mm-hmm. it makes sense to me you know orhan basically yes. he posted i i lent him um uh, i borrowed a book to him, to him and yes. it's a very short book and it's called the next page and there's cool. a, like this bengali guy who lives in canada and he's like a taxi driver and talks to people you know basically you know, questioning their lifestyle, you know, okay. being like a very Socrates type, Hi. you know, and, and giving good advice in a, in a very creative way. Mm. So he said in his book, if I remember correctly, he said something like he washes dead people's body. And wow. he said, like, what I realized with 25 years of experience in voluntarily washing people's dead bodies, he said, like, what? yeah. And he said, like, what I realize is that we come naked to this world and then we accumulate wealth, status, and whatnot. Mm. Then we die. And when we die, these things leave us. They get shared by the other people or people around us, whether it's society or your family. And then yeah. our name and our voice and everything clear, like slowly disappears from the world until, until it's forgotten. Mm. It's only the good deeds and the inspiration that we leave good things that we do in this world right. makes us live forever. So we know Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, you know, Muhammad Ali, these people, mm. you know, to be the re- they are eternals, you know, Prophet Muhammad or all the other prophets or, or gurus or whatnot, you know, it's because of their deeds. Mm. Nobody cares about the money that they had. Mm. You know, mm. we, we give way too much importance. To the materialistic side yeah. of things in, in, Please it not. really hit me that, look, wow. this is what life is all about. And if you want to something to be everlasting, mm. then do an impact. That's why I'm doing this podcast. Yay. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the impact is, 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 uh, it's uh, not only the impact, but to, uh, to be remembered, you know, to have something there. Not even necessarily to be remembered. Look, it's okay if you don't have no fame and nobody remembers yeah. you. But, but to you know that you did something. Something for Just someone. even if it's you. Yeah. Yeah. That you knew that you did something. Yeah. You helped someone. Absolutely. And you don't it's, get any credit for stays, that. It stays. And the, one of the best things <laughs> to do is uh, 
in and in when you anonymous only you yeah. a couple of few know because at the end of the day who knows is the creator mm. he sees all that he can oh visualize oh my god this is what all we were that. talking with one of my friends and you know he said like man you should be promoting yourself by doing you know like i do certain things right and i don't take credits for that sure i'm just i don't take any credits for that. <laughs> no, no, but no. anyway and you know <laughs> yeah. On so, <laughs> yeah so so well, this yeah. person was saying like maybe you should you know do it so mm. people realizes and recognizes you and i find i found it very cringe it's and disturbing. i said like look my dad taught me one thing and i really respect my dad i love him and he's a very wise man even if we don't see eye to eye on mm. everything he said mutaki the one who has he doesn't need to show absolutely and i really believe that i'm not going to be fake or phony because mm. of some other guy i'm not going to lower my standards because of you know impressing someone yeah it's a good know. recognition per se or yeah. well, maybe he meant could be you know what you're saying i really support that 100% yeah it probably could be that just you keep doing yourself yeah. it, will it will come out if it will come out and yeah, if it if doesn't it's to. then you if know let it be because when i'm doing it i'm not doing it so i can get recognition that's mm-hmm. why I, i find politician being politician very very um cringy worth it. yeah it's the intention like look someone things. has to do it obviously and it's not an easy work i'm not mm. no way i'm saying is being a politician is easy speaking of politicians sorry, sorry to cut you mm. short over there if you are you know the ones that make it let's say to their goal and they want to get into the parliament mm. and this applies to every principle but mm. i'm just you know putting it down on the politics and politicians mm. right the one who has the intention of going into this because he just wants to go in there for the recognition so that he can be known as a member of the parliament mostly don't make it they really don't get voted because whatever their energy is emanating but the person who then does it again for no recognition for passion for for a specific reason which is deeper than the eyes of the others they make it it finds a way where it just blows itself you know everything you need is out there in the universe i think you, politicians shouldn't get paid at all for doing it well they should get paid but not as Look, much man, as i i personally paid. i think i think you know like You should be you should do politics when you're like 40 plus. And so you, you have a company or you have been doing something in your life. Yeah. And then you know you should get like bare minimum wage Wages. for that. You know why? Why? Because the money shouldn't be the motivation for doing it. But that's what is. It's yeah, the yeah, money but, but, and the fame yeah, or yeah, the recognition. Yeah, yeah, but the money shouldn't be the reason. Yeah. And I think you should become a legitimate public you, you servant. Should, you should be known for something else. Just to be known for being a politician is kind it's of sad. Good. You should have another art where like, you Like Finland is one of those country. Finland is one of those country. You don't need to be educated or anything. You can just become a politician and that yeah. is like your career. Politics shouldn't be a career. But unfortunately it is a career. It, is. It's, it's, it should be about a making position. a difference. Yeah, it should But be a unfortunately position. like we don't want to Yeah. Say it out loud, but don't you think that it's uh, most of the time it's it like should, it should be like that? Yeah, I mean that's the essence of it. I mean, if you look back at days, the real that's leaders, I, I, I used to get paid. That's why I'm saying like I can't ever become a politician. Mm, it's a responsibility is the reason. that is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're responsible for a whole uh, community, mm. you know, for their general needs. You understand? But the argument comes if the good people don't apply for politics, then, then the crooks the will. Crooks will. You know? So, I mean, look, I'm here. not I'm not like criticizing anyone particularly. Mm. This is just me how I look at myself like I couldn't be a politician, man. Because yeah, first of all, I I don't want to be the guy who's making the diff- difficult call. And I really have respect towards politicians who really try their best. Mm. Mm-hmm to make the right decision because sometimes you don't have the right decision you just have a bunch of bad decisions and 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 then you need to take the blames a bunch of uh, opinions from different other politicians you know what if we we don't understand the responsibility mm. the bigger the, the responsibility the huger the impact that you can have man. Mm. so you should as a person I always run away from leadership even if we're at work you know, yeah if uh even if we're at a university or whatever if we're doing a project then i really hardly volunteer to be the project manager or to be the one who's really trying to coordinate how things go for one that's not my character that's not within me mm. what people don't understand is for one to be a leader then they have to be the one who is actually standing there and taking the whole responsibility the person is a leader in their own way in their yeah. own uh, group of set of skills mm. you understand but to go for the main leadership 
to be the umbrella that is responsible for the whole uh, fruit mm. of the project is huge, man. And yeah. people shouldn't get paid for that. You know, they should be self-motivated mm. to do that. Mm. But you have the opposite where, I don't know if it's... You can't, gi- you can't infinite. give enough importance to a um, task if you have to worry about, you yeah. know, sustaining yourself. Absolutely. So that's the opposite argument for that. Yeah. So I don't know what is like they the sh- perfect solution for, Wait, for the, these things. They, uh, they should get paid more than the others because their responsibility is huge. Mm. But then they should have monitoring from a group of representatives from the public. Like yeah, but, uh, what the like in Finland, doing. we do have like monitoring, you know, like bodies and yes. what, whatnot. But then again, it comes to the standards. Like, okay, in whose standards are you being monitorized? You Absolutely. know, like obviously they must have some kind of a standard. And, mm-hmm. and you know, these anti-corruption things, they do work. Yeah. Finland is one of the the least corrupt countries, countries but still corruption say. happens man like the the head of the police you Arnia. Know, Arnia. Yeah, it happens that guy is that there. guy that guy is like putting <laughs> escobar into shame really <laughs> you know what i mean you know, it's just the tip of the iceberg <laughs> just the little stuff yeah yeah, yeah. how, no, how many know. stuff like you don't really know man. yeah you know uh politics <clears throat> really dirty and this is gonna sound crazy but the only politician in my view i've never voted until mm. this term what made you vote um what the candidate that i voted for mm. made me vote and he kind of actually was able to change my mind mm. and the idea that i had was you know these politicians they offer themselves mm. that they don't really it doesn't matter if i vote or not mm. if this person goes into the house of parliament boom that's it that they're gonna do whatever they want to i know who you and voted then, <laughs> yeah, <and> <laughs> they're not gonna change mm. uh so the only politician that i've seen who's done things is donald trump mm. that guy has actually s- s- pretty much done everything he said that he would do yeah he's Government. a businessman more yeah, than he is more of a businessman but not the point i'm trying to make you know what i like about him yeah, yeah. when he shakes hands and he does like, like <laughs> you know really like pulls yeah he pulls he provokes you to, people yeah he's an agent provocator yeah you know what i mean he will get a character out of you the point is most politicians say i'll do so and so mm. i'll do a b and c but at the end of the day, they don't really do much. Isn't yet. isn't like being politician and all this like vali lupas or what you call mm, them campaign you know, campaign like you promises that you you make right, aren't they similar to like before you get married like in True. Islamic like say Amen. I will let your uh, let your daughter uh, uh, study I I will I, never uh, speak bad to her I will give her I the will, money she deserves yeah, <laughs> exactly you know. and once you get married you're like yeah. <laughs> you're a different guy I mean it's, it's, we it's all, st- you know, every person is a salesman at the end of the day yeah. you know I started a, a small sales type of a thing and I'm pretty much doing it uh, just again it's a job of challenging myself but a concept came into my mind which is most people well, salesmen they, bro- they, they, they brag with I sell Eskimos I sell ice to the Eskimos but at the end of the day, you're a salesman if you can sell drugs to the popos, which meaning mm. if you can sell anything and everything. To well, anyone. To anyone. Mm. We're all salesmen at the end of the day. Everyone's trying to promote self, some sort of idea. I'm into like tech servicing yeah. like industry. And, you know, basically I work in this, in this place mm. and they have, um, so I'm in the installation and ICT department. Right. And sometimes... Some of the users or, or some of the customers, they come up with their devices and whatnot. And, and then I was like, man, like who sold you that stuff? Yeah. You know, you're wasting your money. You're buying something really bad, but yeah. you know, you can't well, really say anything because it's, yeah, you have Salesman, to be, they'll sell it to you. Yeah. I couldn't do that, man. Yeah. Like, I, I would like give an honest opinion mm. rather than, than like a fake one, you know? Yeah. Well, people were different, you know. Most people uh, do no matter what they have to do to get to, again, to the destination and which we should avoid because you shouldn't sell your principles. And if you sell your principles, don't sell them cheap. You know, a lot of people... <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that, I like that. Yeah, if uh, you sell your principles, don't, don't sell them cheap. cheap. I you like know, that. You should have uh, a price which is good. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, don't blow yourself on the knee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sell yourself yeah. cheap and then yeah. start regretting later like, yo, should I really have done that? You know what? I, I totally agree with you. So it's... Uh, like, you know, if you're going to cheat, then cheat in a way that people are going to remember you. Like, Whoa, that <laughs> Don't was... Don't cheat like taking an scam. apple. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a big scam that you did. So it's crazy. Oh, we really should have a mindset like mm. that because we will sell stuff mm. at the end of the day. Mm. I'm not selling my soul, but maybe if it's a couple of billion, I might... Yeah, that, that, that's uh, the thing that I, I say always to people that, you know, who 
complain about the rich people doing mm. random stuff. Yeah. And I was like, look, man, if I had that kind of money, I would probably do the same thing. Man. Why Why would I stay in Kondola? Like, mm. I would just probably go to New York. Money. I would go to Las Vegas, you know, Buy like a just, private jet on the way. Yeah, and, man. Like, because, you know, most of us, we like talking about stuff that we haven't been through. Yeah. It's easy to do that. Yeah. You know, if you're not within the situation itself, yeah. then, yeah, a lot of people will say this and that. You know, but once they put into it, they're like, whoa. And then people say, like, money can buy happiness, but money can buy you pleasure. It does. Yeah. You know. It doesn't buy you happiness, but it mu- buys pleasure. you pleasure. Yeah. Happiness is a whole it's different thing. It's a different concept. thing. Yeah. A happiness is thing. more like what we were talking about, you being you. zen. Yeah. You know what I mean? You being, like, in sync with the, you know, you just, things are happening and you're like, I'm it's good. not in my control. You yeah. know, it's cool. I'm I just focus on what can I, what can I can I do. do. Yeah. How can I contribute? Don't go psychotic. You're happy. You're content with yourself. Yeah. And that's the goal. That's what we're trying to sell. Mm. We're not selling it for cheap either. Mm. You have to subscribe and uh, monthly fee. Vision. Monthly fee, yeah. my friend. And that's so. just how it is. Should we wrap up the session in, yes. in the next uh, clip? Yes, we should. Yeah. So, wrapping up the session, is there anything in your mind i mean i know that we had a lot of list of things that we wanted to talk about but we couldn't kind of get into that mm. but hopefully in the future i think that's a good good topics that we discuss like for example peer pressure and mm. you know what i'm wearing this shirt in the wrong way no you're I'm not. trying to be yeah i am actually because it looking, feels still looking real good though. yeah you know it's, you know, it's, it's not what you wear, how you, wear, how it. you wear it. Okay, I'm just going to ro- roll <laughs> with this. But is there anything that you want to get out of your chest before we kind of wrap it up? Wrap that up. Yes. Uh, self-esteem. Yeah. You know, uh, self-confidence. And you know, there's a thin line between self-confidence and arrogance. Yeah. You know, um, that self-esteem is like you can actually apply to what you said right now mm. because uh, the shirt is crisscross it's the other way mm. around right? but then it's how you rock it and how you wear it mm. you understand you, you the stuff you're wearing doesn't make you look good you're making it look good it's how, oh, you, how you look you. at that how you look at the <laughs> angle from right so that self-esteem it's self-talk it's self-conversation mm. you know which most of us don't really do I should get a little space and uh, even if it's 10 minutes a day where you can self-meditate and talk to yourself and talk to yourself positively understand mm. most of us you know mutaqi uh, we we really tell ourselves things that are not from from us it's mm. not really from our brain it's from what's around us mm. and you know we 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 over criticize ourselves and then we get a bad feeling about it and you get guilty and the feel the guilt mm. is not a healthy feeling mm. you know guilt is uh if you did something that you disliked or did not go the way you did, fix it. Fix it or learn something yeah. from it and forget the guilt. Yeah. You can progress like that. Live in the moment. There you go. And live towards future. Towards the future. Without yeah. being way too much in there. But yeah, so <laughs> if some people. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that, it. Yeah, where they worry about uh, something that they. I get, the gambling is a good idea. Mm. You know, this person gambled something, something he he went for your jackpot or whatever. I don't know, right? There's nothing else he can do about it. Mm. So this individual consistently keeps on thinking, shit, man, if I make this money, I'll do this, I'll do that. Or they keep on worrying about it. Look, man, what if I lose? I've lose, you know, I've used too much You're in money. this limbo. Yeah, limbo. Yeah, you're in this limbo yeah, that yeah, constantly yeah. like loop. Yeah, you're in the yeah. loop where you can't get out of. So I don't know if limbo talk. is like... English or Finnish word. Anyway. Carousel. Uh, isn't that in Finnish where you just... Oh, carousel. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, you... that's different. But anyway, <laughs> we were, you, you, what you said is yeah. good. Like, work on self-esteem mm. and, you know, like, have... Like, we we watch the mirror many times, you know, in a day. Mm. But, like, look into the soul. Don't just look what is in, in you know, yeah. in, in Yeah, because the of... soul is really the king of mm. things. And it's, uh, it's pure. It's pure hey, energy. Hey, is there any questions you want to leave for the... For, for the, the audience and yeah. the viewers, yeah. So they could comment on the absolutely. Uh, comment with hate, you know. Comment because that motivates us. You should comment with <laughs> whatever you dislike, and, and 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 don't have a filter. If you do dislike with something, just put it mm. down there. And yeah, you putting this thing, and I have to deal with that. <laughs> yes. We'll deal with them together, but he's gonna get most of the work though. And, yeah. and then subscribe. You have to subscribe. And Even if we, you hate, we don't care. Yeah, just subscribe. Really so subscribe on that and link on us, and we have more 
to come. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your, it's my man Wardy, yep. aka Russ Roots. Roots. Russ Roots. So, and I, I hope in the future you will talk about how you came up with this, with the name itself, yeah. and the concept of. It. Yes, we will. We're definitely we'll get into the roots of yeah. the things. Exactly. So yeah, I, I, I like I like how you're saying. I guess. And um, you know how it is. Keep liking, keep sharing, and if you like this show, you know, talk, you know, share it on Facebook. You know, I don't mind. This episode is sponsored you sponsored by Sugar, Sugar Daddy, Daddy and the Mr. Skull. Yeah. Just and there's joking. no ifs. We know you like this. So just, <laughs> just go on and subscribe on it. All right. There hey, you thanks for Thank for, you, for your time. Thank you for having and me. We have to do this again. Pleasure. All right. Take care, people.